Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, I want to talk about Scions. I want to do a bit of a beginner's guide. How you can leverage these elite soldiers of the guard in your regular army where you're taking tanks and other stuff. But also, I want to do a bit of an overview on how they work if you do want to run them as a pure Scions army, which is actually possible. And so let's not mess around like the Emperor's true finance. Let us strike surgically and dive right into today's episode. Let us begin with a brief overview of what the hell Scions actually are. In the fluff, the Scions represent the best of the best of the best. They're kind of the elite shock troops of the guard and many consider them to be the finest that regular humanity has to offer, with them only being beaten out by things like the Space Marines and Custodes, who are of course genetic super warriors. On the tabletop, this translates to a unit which on the whole is similar to a Guardsman, they've got the same toughness, but they generally have better armor to represent that they are given carapace armor rather than just a flak jacket. And they also get better equipment with a whole smorgasbord of special weapons such as plasma and melter guns. Quick side note, I have talked a lot about Scions in 10th edition, but I've got into the, the nitty gritty, the deep dive, if you will. If you're interested in that kind of information, I'll make sure there's a link down in the description to my what is the best loadout for your Scions video. But going back to the topic of today, so you have these elite soldiers with lots of special weapons. This tends to make them a more precise tool, more of a specialist unit over, let's say, your average infantry blob. Scions come in squads of 5 to 10 strong, whereas an infantry platoon can take as many as 20 people in it. Long story short, your Scions are less numerous, but their equipment is better and overall their stats are better as well. You don't really use these guys for in a hybrid guard army, we're taking a mix of things. You don't really use them for storming objectives and dogpiling it with as much objective control as you can. They do slightly different functions and tasks. Speaking of which, there are two common ways that guard players like to use Scions in their hybrid guard army. The first one is you run them as cheap as possible. You just go a five man unit. Now right now in 10th edition, you have free war gear, so you can give them plasma as a melt because if you want. In previous editions, people wouldn't bother doing that because you had to pay for your special weapons. You just take them bare bones. Now you take this five man unit, give whatever special weapons you want, and you put it into deep strike reserve. Not strategic reserve, but deep strike reserve. This means that from turn two and turn three onwards, it can teleport down onto the battlefield anywhere on the board, as long as it is nine inches away from the enemy. And what you are doing with this unit, because it's only five man, right? So it's not really got the firepower to do all that much damage. What you're doing with this unit is you are specializing it into the role of secondary objective achiever. If turn two, you pull the card, deploy teleporter homer, well, guard can be quite a slow army. There's, there's ways you can build it to be faster, but we, we're quite a slow army. You might struggle to get into the middle of the board to deploy that teleporter homer, or you might struggle to get into your opponent's deployment zone to deploy it there. But if you have five scions and your opponent's left a gap, bear in mind these guys are on little 25 mil bases, so it's really easy to squeeze them into those tight areas you can drop them down behind enemy lines and you can score deployed teleporter homers and you can get lots of victory points likewise you might draw behind enemy lines and sometimes you even get the golden draw where you get both of those in one turn and your little five-man silent squad drops down and scores you a buttload of points and all it cost you was well, a handful of points of recording you can take five silence 50 points which is next to nothing however you might think that using the best of the best the most elite soldiers that the guard has to offer as glorified teleporter homers is a little bit lame and a little bit rubbish if you want to feel the raw power of the scions then another way you can use them is as what i like to call pseudo artillery or pseudo indirect fire now in warhammer 40k there tends to be a lot of terrain, especially when you're talking competitively. And a lot of this terrain tends to be line of sight blocking. So it can be difficult for you to get 
line of sight to draw a bead with things like your Lehman Russes and your other main damage dealers. This is where artillery often comes in, where they can shoot things they can't see. The problem with artillery is that it can be very expensive and also it's not all that accurate unless you really invest in everything like orders and then you've got uh, scout sentinels. It, it, sometimes it, you're spending a lot of points just to be able to shoot something you can't see. This is where scions can come in relatively cheaply for less than the price of a single manticore at the time of recording this video you can take a full 10-man squad of scions and actually attach a five-man sound command squad to that unit as well for a total of 15 scions in one big blob now these scions are going to have a lot of special weapons you can put four special weapons in the command squad you can have four special weapons in the big 10 man squad and you can have an officer with a plasma pistol and you can have a sergeant with a plasma pistol you're looking at a lot of special weapons and again this whole unit can deep strike down now by being able to deep strike you might be able to get a line to get an angle where you can see past the line of sight blocking ruins where you can see something where your tanks like they can't. And so you drop down and you go, let's rock! And you just blast the enemy with all of your special weapons. So thanks to Scions having some pretty good data sheet rules, like the Stormtrooper ability, which can give you full rerolls to hit when you're shooting an enemy unit that's on an objective. And if you've got a Scion Command Squad leading them, you should also have sustained hits as well. It means you can generate a, a lot, a lot of damage output from this one drop and so it's like having an artillery piece that is a bit cheaper and can do a lot more punch of course the risk with both of these tactics the five man squad and the giga blob is when they drop down at the end of the day scions are only human they're only toughness three and sure having a four plus save might be quite impressive in the guard but in the wider game it's still like having toilet paper for arm it's like having a t-shirt and so you should expect when using your sounds in this way for them to drop down, do their job, be that deploy teleporter home behind enemy lines or to just smash the entire area, kill anything with more than two legs. Once they've done that job, uh, they're going to die. Okay, so that goes how you want to use these bozos in your regular guard forces. But what if you want to commit to that scion lifestyle? A, how is it possible? And B, how does this army play on the table? So to answer that first question, Scions are normally not battle line. And so as a result, they are restricted by the rule of three, meaning you can only ever get three squads of them in your army. In a hybrid army, a normal guard army, that means you are most going to get three 10-man squads and then three Scion command squads. But if you take your Scion command squad, you make one of your Tempest of Primes, one of those officers, your Warlord... And it means that your scions, your regular military and scion squads, become battle line. And they don't get OC2, they remain OC1, which is an important note, but they become battle line. This means you can get up to six squads of them. So you can have six 10 man squads plus your three five man command squads for a total of 75 scions if you wanted to go down this pure scion route important side note though you cannot make your tempesta prime your warlord if you have the lord solar leontis he has to be a ward he's the, the head honcho so you can't run pure scions and the lord solar at the same time now getting this many scions takes them from being a specialized unit which is going to drop down new things and then be done and actually transforms them into your mainline infantry because you've got some serious numbers there 75 scions is a really big deal that is a lot of firepower to start off with because you've got all the special weapons but also it's going to be a lot of maneuverability because every single one of those squads can potentially deep strike in this role when you're taking this many scions and you think about deep striking this many of them they go from just nuking a specific target to actually you do want to sweep and clear objectives. They're going to deep strike down, they're going to blast the enemy off the objective, and then hopefully the next turn they'll be able to survive to move on to the objective themselves and start securing it. What's really cool is in previous editions, before 10th edition, you couldn't take anything that wasn't Tempest of Scions in your scion army so the only units you could get were your tempesta squads your tempesta command squads and your torx primes and i think valkyries were allowed as well but in 10th edition 
that restriction is gone. So it's entirely possible for you to take uh, 75 scions and then back that up with like Rogal Dawns, Lehman Russes and other things. But there are essentially two camps in the Scion community. There are the new Scions who are taking all the main battle tank stuff. And then there are the purists, the traditional players that feel like Scions, you know, traditionally should and should still play with just those like Torx Primes and then the Deep Striking Infantry. If you go down the former route where you do decide to take advantage of the full guard toolbox, what you'll end up finding is you play more of a grenadier, an elite infantry style army, but it still operates in a very similar way to normal guard, where your infantry is going to be pushing onto objectives, uh, probably having to use your silence to screen a little bit. You're just using them like infantry squads, but they're a little bit more punchy and a little bit more durable. If you go down the purest route, the army is going to play wildly differently. And this is where we're going to focus for a moment. You will find that your army almost feels like Dark Eldar, where it's very fast because your Toroxes can go faster than your other transports, and it's very punchy. Combining the Scion rerolls with the rerolls you get from the Torox Prime, it can mean you really punch well above your weight. But you are going to be incredibly fragile. Scion's toughness 3, Torox Primes are only toughness 8, the three up save and only 10 wounds, they are significantly less durable than things like Chimeras. Trust me, I have run both individually and together in the same list and Chimeras can actually tank a shot. Torx Primes, if something looks at them, anything, they just go down. They barely survive small arms fire in 10th edition. So you'll find that you have the speed, the violence and the momentum, but you will not have the durability. One other thing to mention as well, if you don't include things like main battle tanks and you're just sticking with these scion traditional units your weapons are going to cap out at about strength nine you're looking at plasma guns melter guns and crack missiles and your torx primes you will notice this you'll be suddenly fine de you'll be fine dealing with a lot of enemies you'll be blasting enemy infantry and then you'll just come across someone with an armored list maybe it's iron storm spearhead maybe it's just necrons running around with loads of katan they're still taking some of them even after the points increase this will be a problem for you because you're going to be wounding on fives and even though you've got a lot of special weapons and you could be throwing a lot at the wall and maybe you've got full rerolls in the torx primes you are still fishing for fives and sixes and sometimes those five and sixes just don't come up you don't have that safety net that you don't have that comfortable feeling of just shooting something with a last cannon and being able to wound it on a three essentially be aware that sometimes Scions really struggle into the toughest of targets and it's going to take a lot of concentrated firepower to bring down a target that a hybrid guard army might normally deal with without even thinking about it. Overall, I think Scions are a fantastic unit. Whether you are using them to support and supplement your regular guard forces or you are committing to the pure Scion playstyle, I've always found them to be highly effective and efficient troops and always a good choice for your army. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you a fan of Scions? And if so, do you like to take them just to support your regular guard? Or do you go pure Scions? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day.
And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patreons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the War Masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. To a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Marcus Roberts, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Wolf, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.